were never taught anything in mm -hmm. grade school. But when I went to art school, I'd mostly been copying comics on loose leaf notebook paper yeah. <laughs> with a pencil or a big pen. Um, and then I started to realize by reading, um, you know, stuff by c other comic artists or some of the behind the scenes things that companies would sometimes publish that there was special paper that they drew on and India ink was used and the, there was a brush involved and all of these technical things about inking that seemed really amazing and scary. Uh, so then I tried to do some of that. Um, but it wasn't until I went to art school that I ever picked up watercolor. Mm -hmm. I'd never even knew it existed. Yeah. I mean, it's just like most, I, I'm not most, but there, I would say the majority of, uh, of comic creators, or ri artists rather, use pencils and inks and all that. You mm -hmm. don't necessarily see uh, all that many painters in, in the industry anymore. I mean, I would say probably before more so, but it really is a different feel and it really comes across, especially for Sandman with a it more fantasy. It really works for Sandman yeah. because he's so dreamy. Ethereal and <laughs> yeah, angelic, and yeah. He, you seem like he just kind of melts out of the shadows, right. melts back into the shadows. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I started out traditionally, you know, drawing comics the way everybody else has drawn them with pen and ink and all of my early work was, I was just a penciler and, and then um, I started working with watercolor when I created The Scary Godmother because I love to paint mm -hmm. uh, and my niece was going to be born and I wanted to make a book for the baby so I just started painting a story for her mm -hmm. and then I wanted to do it in comic form because I really liked it and I never planned on any of it and suddenly after I started doing that it became the style that everyone was used to seeing me work in right. and it was really fun and easy for me and I, it's like I think I finally found my artistic voice mm -hmm. uh, versus more than being just like a regular traditional pen, pen and ink artist. Right. I assume th in some of those instances where there's like a big stain or something that like you were saying earlier, that you might go back and be like, oh, I wish I did this in pencil beforehand, you know, just. <laughs> oh, well, there's <laughs> plenty know. of times that, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of friends of mine that work digitally now. Yeah. And I'm like, can you please teach me how to do this? I really kind of want to learn because... Is there a way to do watercolor and stuff? Oh, digitally? I guess there's a whole brush. I mean, you, really? I have a friend that does amazing um, oil painting digitally, and it looks like a traditional oil, oil mm -hmm. painting. Um, and it's just, you know, I, I know I could do it. I just don't have any practice or knowledge of it as a tool. Right. But everyone that I ask kind of discourages me. They're like, but you have originals when you're done. Yeah. You should keep doing this. Yeah. And I was like, but it seems like it's quicker. You know, once you master sure, it, yeah. you don't have to wait for anything to dry. <laughs> y like I usually have my little, um, I have my little hair dryer in here. So when I'm painting something and it's still wet, like you can see this area is wet, this area is wet, and this is, you don't really want to really go back into certain areas while they're wet right. because then the paint will bleed all over the place. Uh -huh. So to speed up the process, I blow dry the pages all the time. <laughs> and, um, you know, that takes time, too, So because you can't do it. And all they have to do is click a button or right. change a color, and S nobody has to clean out their paint or realize, oh, I'm out of this color. Yeah. And I have to go to the store now. They just click something. And, so, and they're like, you, no, you should keep doing what you're doing. And it's like, okay, I will keep doing this, but I would like to add that <laughs> to my repertoire. It would be nice. Yeah. To see how I could do it. Look, you were saying like these areas here are wet. Uh, how big of a piece of paper do you actually draw? On? Like how big would this be on a page? So this, a th like this area right here is wet, and you can see there's like this little flower-looking thing, right. snowflake-looking thing, which I'm going to leave it. I'm not going to touch that because it's weird, and I like it. <laughs> um, and it looks really Sandman-y. But, but would this be like a panel? That's what I mean. This would be like a size of a panel. Uh -huh. I work the traditional regular comic book live art size, which is 10 by 15 inches right. um, on an 11 by 17 page mm -hmm. because that's what I'm used to working at. That's the format that I've always worked at. I know that some people that do, like Bill Sienkiewicz does paintings and he can do really big one and then resize it digitally and then create his own page from a lot of different pages. Mm -hmm. But then that seems to me that instead of doing one page, you're doing five pages and making it one page. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I suppose, you know, at some point my eyes are going to need me to do things bigger. Sure. 
and Sandman's eye, he needs an eye in here. <laughs> uh, he also needs his nose and the shadow. That thing. I mean, it's incredible how accurate you can be with a pa Like, whenever I paint, not that it's all that often, I'm just all over the place. Luckily, it's usually a wall or something. I, oh, I am the worst at painting walls. What? I can't paint a wall. I can paint an accurate picture of a wall <laughs> or a beautiful picture of a, a room, but I cannot paint a room with a gallon of paint. It takes me... I tried to paint my closet once. It took me a whole gallon of paint, and it looked awful. But do you paint with one of those <laughs> instead of like... No. A <laughs> I, I can paint better with a brush than yeah. a roller. So I gotcha. if I had to just use a paintbrush like this yeah. and paint a room, I, it would take me forever, but I could do it much mm. better than if, if I roll, it looks like a monkey got to it. <laughs> do you have special, br I mean, obviously you have special brushes that you use, but is there a, a different sort of brush that you like better or? Um, well, this is a brand new brush that I got. Um, somebody asked me this the other day and I realized the project that I'm working on for DC right now, mm -hmm. I've used about 60 of these brushes. So I have bigger brushes that I use for larger areas, but when I start doing detail, I have like this number six. It's an, a synthetic brush, but it has a really good point on it. Yeah. So this would be like something that an inker would traditionally ink with because that's what I'm, I eventually do with um, the color. Like if I would go in to outline something, it's a really thin line. And I usually use a different, you know, the, a darker version of the color that I'm using, so this is black and white, so it's almost like I'm really doing traditional inking mm -hmm. with it. But because of the tooth of the paper and um, you know how many strokes you end up doing, I realized I went th and I rotate the brushes out because sometimes eventually the point won't be there anymore, right. and um, then I have to go get more. So I I counted through my little cups full of things, <laughs> and I realized I've used about 60 brushes. Wow. So how, so how long does a brush usually last? Is there math to it? You know, like X amount of pages? You know, I, I have to pay attention to that because it, I'll just start noticing that it's mm -hmm. not giving me the control yeah. that I need anymore. And then that's when I realize I got to go to the store. Um, and then I buy a bunch of them all at the same time. So I'm never sure how long they last because mm -hmm. I'll start just rotating them out as I need them. Um, but I, that'll, I think I'm going to pay attention so I can see. Because it, it can get costly. I bet. I mean, nice brushes can be a little expensive. Yeah. these are. This one is kind of reasonably repriced, but um, this one is a travel brush. And I bought it when I was traveling in Europe once. It's got this really cool hard case to protect the point. Uh, so you can hide it away when you're not using it. It's got a hole so it'll dry. That's cool. But it was in Euros. Oh, no, it was in in francs at mm -hmm. the time before they went changed to the euro. So I didn't really know what it was. It yeah. was, I had to do math to figure <laughs> it out. And it wasn't until I got my credit card bill later that I realized this was a hundred dollar brush. Ooh. So I'm so, I I'm more careful with this than anything else I own. Then I only use it when I am doing little, tra I, when I travel, mm -hmm. I don't use it for any other <laughs> painting because it has to last forever. Cause yeah. I will never be buying it. You gotta get your miles again. out of it. <laughs> Does anybody in the audience read Sandman? Yes. All right. Or, we got or some Neil Gaiman. Oh, this person over here, all the way over. Duh. <laughs> we got to come up with a Sandman question that we can yeah, get good. this thing out here. We only have a few minutes left. That's good because I'm pretty much done with awesome. this. Awesome. Usually right. I, I end up not having enough time, but I chose wisely. I, got, I actually have one locked and loaded. Ah, we'll go. You, All right. Well, yeah. In the Sandman, which sibling of the Endless was the one that exiled himself? You. Correct. Dur destruction. <laughs> destruction. Destruction. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just. Uh, I hate to admit this, but I just finished Sandman for the first time a couple, half a year ago or so. I've and read it the first, like, six books before, but never actually Fisha. finished it. Sorry, I mean, look at I that. That's incredible. It's it looks good big. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give a round of applause for Jill Thompson. And that's what it looks like for real. That was awesome. That was her right there. Yep.
You get to it? Yeah, of course. I got to sign it. She's got to sign it real quick. I have to send it to you real quick. <laughs> Wait, my pencils are in here. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks, everybody, for sticking around. We have a, a bunch of art demos tomorrow and throughout the rest of the weekend, so we'll see you then.